Castle Craig Farm at Tayanga in Waikato has held full BioGro organic certification since 2004 and supports two operations. Colin and Dorothy Gilbert raise dairy stock and run sheep and beef, while their daughter Christabel and her husband Guy Pilgrim supply meat for their own brand called Pilgrim's Organics. The two operations are separate businesses but work collaboratively, sharing yards, sheds, machinery and labour. This farm is a thousand acres, all certified organic. It's split into two halves, so we farm 500 acres, of which we farm about 400 ewes, um, 80 beef cows, and we graze around 130 um, dairy heifers for a, a dairy farmer near Matamata. We concentrate our efforts on the North Island because that's where our two established families were here already, Hawke's Bay and Northland. We made a list of um, important things, prayerfully, and uh, quite a long list, and one of them was um, uh, no floods, <laughs> which um, this didn't quite match up for that one. And also, um, uh, Dorothy was keen to find an area not on a fault line. Um, in fact, uh, we looked at 35 or so farms altogether, and this one actually fitted into nearly all the requirements. It's a good summer safe area and uh, not much winter. The grass grows a bit all the year round and a lot of merits really. And then of course having the flats as well as a, a bonus was ideal. We've got just over 400 grazers on our side and a third of them are rising one-year-olds and two-thirds are rising two-year-olds that are in calf. They start going to the bull at the end of October. And we also have a batch of dry cows. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on. We don't take them young as calves. We prefer not because they have to stay three months on milk for the organics. And just a few start coming in December, but the main bunches come in May. And then they have a year's contract till the next May. And this means that we've got younger animals for the winter, which don't eat so much but we sometimes need to supplement them with some of our home-produced silage and hay. The correlation between running sheep and cattle, they go one after the other. They produce different types of worm to each other, and so they do not infect each other. And therefore, the cattle can go and clean up the worm burden in front of the sheep, and vice versa. And the lambs, for fat lambs, they come down to the flats in December after weaning and graze behind the cattle and help down there as well. The stock don't actually cost as much as they do if you farm conventionally because you haven't got your fertilizer and your chemicals. And if you leave the soil to just get on on its own, the microorganisms within it do a wonderful job working in harmony with the plants and produce well, whereas they diminish once fertilizer is put on. So the cost of production on the actual farm is not high, but it's the auditing cost to be certified organic, and then the transport costs, because the animals have to be kept separate, and then the abattoirs, they find it costly being audited, very big cost for them, which makes it difficult for marketing. And that's where a lot of work is needed until there's enough organic stock in bulk for the containers. We feel there is a good future for it. They really need to concentrate on the marketing of the organic produce so that the abattoirs can afford to hang the meat longer so it's tender and has a better flavor for the beef. That's very important because the customers don't want it tough, and to help the marketing abroad to develop, as in the, with the great demand that is abroad, and it's increasing by about 20% a year, we need to be in that market before other countries seize it, such as South America. At the beginning, we joined a discussion group, which was all the new dairy farmers learning off each other about the merits and how to do the organics. So, we got to know a lot of dairy farmers at the beginning, so then we've got their young stock. 
Certainly animal health is one of the biggest challenges, I guess, with organic mm -hmm. um, farming. One thing we try and do with young stock, be it dairy mm -hmm. or our own beef weaners, we try and, um, well with weaners we try and wean them onto relatively clean pastures, and when I say clean pastures I mean you know, pasture that's, that hasn't had cattle on it for some months actually. We also try and introduce plenty of fibre into the diet to you know, help build them up, get the rumen development going. So we use those sort of tools, whether it be with dairy heifers or our own beef. We would tag ewes that got fly strike, and then if in the, the following year, if they came back the next summer and did it again, then they would go on the truck, as it were. So you know, the, the ewe flock is not really an issue with the fly strike, certainly. But lambs, a bit more of a challenge, especially at weaning time. Sometimes, it is, especially this season, just go on a case of keep shearing. Um, because the season catches us out, sometimes we think we're really getting on top of the fly strike issue, and then it comes back with a bit of a vengeance. So, but if you keep sharing, it's not so much of an issue, really. At the end of the day, unfortunately, there is no organic parasite prevention, or there's no way we can go in there with an organic product once the parasite is there. So, hence, it's all about prevention as opposed to just sort of mob treating. It was always in our plan to brand our own product and, and sell our meat directly, really. Again, a lot of farmers in the UK had, have had to do that sort of thing, be it through a, a sort of farm shop um, retail opportunity or f f from the growth of farmers' markets. So, um, so obviously, once we became established here in, in what we were doing on the farm, we, um, we started to gradually make the move to, you know, use our name to put on the meat that we produce. So we had to go out and find a, a processor to work with that did the cutting and the vacuum packing. We then put our, our label on it, have the, all the product back and um, go out and sell it, albeit um, direct to the consumer, to the to, to the Joe public or um, through, through the farmer's markets, which is the avenue we chose to go. Well, we're looking to step back a little bit from the personal commitment of the farmer's markets and we're looking to get a little bit more involved in sort of direct retail through some retailers that we've started working with in Auckland. So we've supplied a bit of meat to Sabato in Mount Eden and Nosh. So we're now looking to develop the relationship that we have with Nosh and we're working fairly closely with them in terms of retailing organic meat from here on really. So which will involve um, supply, not necessarily from, you know, from our own farm. So. Um, yeah, that's, uh, they were keen on, on, on the little brand that we'd created, so um, we need to try and develop that now. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.